In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. A very warm welcome to our Mass on this Sunday morning, as today we celebrate the feast of the great Apostles, Peter and Paul the two great pillars of the Church, Peter the one Jesus chose to be the rock on which he would build his Church. Paul became the Apostle to the nations. Two very different men, but two men who both gave their lives for God. We reflect on their lives as we celebrate our Mass. And we ask their strength to give us their help in our lives as we continue the work of building up the Church in our day. As always, let us begin our Mass by pausing for a few moments and inviting God's love and mercy into our hearts and our minds. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy upon us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Oh, 
O God, who on the solemnity of the Apostles Peter and Paul give us the noble and holy joy of this day, grant, we pray, that your Church may in all things follow the teaching of those whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Herod started persecuting certain members of the church. He beheaded James, the brother of John, and when he saw that this pleased the Jews, he decided to arrest Peter as well. This was during the days of the unleavened bread, and he put Peter in prison, assigning four squads of four soldiers, each to guard him in turns. Herod meant to try Peter in public after the end of the Passover week. All the time Peter was under guard, the church prayed to God for him unremittingly. On the night before Herod was to try him, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, fastened with double chains, while guards kept watch at the main entrance to the prison. Then suddenly the angel of the Lord stood there and the cell was filled with light. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him. Get up, he said. Hurry! and the chains fell from his hands. The angel then said, put on your belt and your sandals. After he had done this, the angel next said, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter followed him, but had no idea that what the angel did was all happening in reality. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed through two guard posts, one after the other and they reached the iron gate leading to the city. This opened of its own accord. They went through it and had walked the whole length of one street when suddenly the angel left him. It was only then that Peter came to himself. Now I know it is all true, he said. The Lord really did send his angel to save me from Herod and from all that the Jewish people were so certain would happen to me. The word of the Lord.
St. Paul to Timothy. My life is already being pulled away as a libation, and the time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All there is now to come is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which to the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. The Lord stood by me and gave me power, so that through me the whole message might be proclaimed for all pagans to hear. And so I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from all evil attempts on me and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say he is John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say I am? Then Jesus, then Simon Peter spoke up. You are the Christ, he said, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you are a happy man. Because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When it is possible, we will visit Tallinn in Estonia again to visit our son, his wife, daughter Rosie and their new arrival, Marilla, born on the 2nd of May. Estonia is in the Baltic, for anyone who doesn't know, just below Finland, and was said to be the most secular country in Europe. Interestingly, it celebrates the birth of John the Baptist with a bank holiday for everyone. Would that we were so secular. The cathedral there is named for St. Peter and Paul, and their statues above the sanctuary are probably life size. Peter holding the book, looking at the same time fearful and loving towards heaven. Paul is terrifying, looking down on us and holding the sword by which he was martyred. I had not registered that both saints were martyred in a persecution after Nero had burnt down half of Rome and his commission of inquiry blamed it on this new religious group, the Christians, and they were made to pay heavily. In all situations of life, every task needs the right person. And most of us will have experienced how well things go when that is happening. Equally, we also feel the discordant and grinding impact when the wrong person is in place. These two men were chosen by God for different reasons, but were right. Both were unsuitable. I saw this week a quote that said, God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. At the time Peter was arrested, the Emperor Claudius was in power, 
and was busy establishing a foothold in his newest conquest, Britain. He had appointed Herod Agrippa to his grandfather's former kingdom and who now had command of the Roman legions in Palestine. He had already beheaded James and saw this made him popular. So Peter was a great prize and whose death was expected to be another boost to, him, to his image. Peter was released after the whole Christian community had prayed unremittingly. I wonder what unremitting prayer looks like. All of the community praying all of the time for a single objective. I've certainly never witnessed it. A few weeks ago, we had a world rosary chain for 12 hours, praying for our release from the COVID virus. But that was just for 12 hours. And I'm not sure how many of us actually did it. I imagine unremitting to be like bombarding heaven with prayer, tide after tide of intercession, appealing to our loving Father for a single thing, and he, knowing what we needed before we said a word, granted it. But to get it, it was necessary to ask. So Peter, the foolish fisherman, was released at the hands of an angel and had to be accompanied to a safe distance before even he could believe it to be true. After Paul's conversion, he came back to Jerusalem and started to preach. The founding Christians, uh, the founding group of Christians knew of him as Saul and did not trust him ever, believing he might be a spy for the Romans, which may have been the reason that he had to be so over the top. This permanent mistrust by those he wished to be near may have been the cross he carried. Whatever it was, his teaching caused riots and he had to be spirited out of Jerusalem and back to Tarsus, where he had come from after just 15 days. When he had gone, the area was peaceful once more. But as we know, that was not the end. Neither man gave up. Peter to carry the keys of the kingdom of heaven on his mission to make Jesus known in the epicenter of the known world in Rome. Paul to expand his knowledge to the people beyond the Jewish community, one of them opening the opportunity of redemption, the other establishing the foundations of faith on which the church could stand, mission and maintenance. Their lives had a single purpose from, the, their, from their calling and they fulfilled it up to and including dying for Jesus and the kingdom he proclaimed. The use by Jesus of the words bound and loosed to Peter can be both read positively, bound in the love of marriage and loosed from slavery, for example. We always tend to try to interpret everything diametrically, this or that, black or white, innocent or guilty, when God of all beings has many more facets than that. Generally, we bind what is good to our behaviours and let go the things that are unhelpful on our journey to heaven. So as unqualified as we are or may feel, we are called, and it is in responding to that call that God qualifies us for his purpose as individuals. However, we are a community too, and it is only as a community of faith that we have a chance of achieving anything like unremitting prayer to change anything. We witness how obsession with individuality and personal freedom tears us apart and how communal effort with kindness, compassion, action and prayer strengthens and enhances us. The blind do not see better by being shouted at to look harder. But the thoughtless may be brought to thoughtfulness by witnessing the quiet good example that we can demonstrate. Like Peter and Paul, God has called you and waits for your answer. God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the Church. Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessing on your Church, especially for Pope Francis, Bishop Mark and for Father John and our deacons here at St Mary's. Please guide all those involved in decisions about restarting public mass in this country so that this, that this can be done at the right time, safely and with due concern for the most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. Dear Lord, we pray for our world and especially for all those places which suffer from extreme poverty or conflict. We ask you to protect the poorest and most vulnerable people from both the health and economic consequences of the current pandemic. Guide all world leaders and open their hearts to the plight of the poor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick. Loving Father, we pray for all those who are sick at this time. We especially remember those from our own parish. We ask for your hand of healing on all those who are sick or suffering, especially those who are struggling with their mental health or who are victims of domestic abuse. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died and for the bereaved. Father, God, we pray for the souls of all who have died recently. Grant them eternal rest with you. Pour down your blessings on those recently bereaved and give them comfort and the knowledge that they are loved by you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community. Lord, you made us to live in community. We pray for our church community at this time when we cannot meet together in person. We thank you for the ability to meet online and to keep in contact with each other through electronic means. We thank you for all those in our church and local community who have been volunteering to help the vulnerable. Help us all to be aware of the needs around us and to show your love in action. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Let's just pause for a few moments and remember the things that we wish to pray for. And now let us entrust our prayers to the intercession of our Blessed Lady as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to listen to our prayers, those we have spoken aloud, and all those that we hold in the silence of our hearts. And we pray that what we ask with faith, we may be worthy to receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. May the prayer of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration, and may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter, Foremost in confessing the faith, Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established an early church from the remnant of Israel. Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so each in a different way, gathered together the one family of Christ, and revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the saints and angels, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Yeah. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. <coughs> For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess his resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognising the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Peter and Saint Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and Mark our Bishop, the order of bishops, 
or the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now in spiritual communion, let us share with one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away, you take away the sins of the sins of the world. The world. Miserere nobis, miserere nobis. Bread of life, bread of life, you take away, you take away. Sins of the world, the world, misery nobis, 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Thank you for joining me for our Mass this Sunday morning, the Feast of Peter and Paul. From next Saturday evening, the 4th of July, we will be celebrating Mass again in public. And so Mass will be at St Anthony's on Saturday evening and our two Masses here on Sunday. But we're asking you to register, if you can, on the parish website 
if you want to come on Sunday or Saturday evening or phone the parish office. If you're free during the week, then perhaps it would be better for you to come to Mass on a weekday because our numbers will be limited in both our churches. Um, and if you're afraid of coming at the moment, then that's okay. Um, the obligation to attend Sunday Mass was lifted at the beginning of the pandemic and won't be returning in the foreseeable future. And one of our Masses each weekend will be filmed, so you'll be able to follow Mass at home um, as you've been able to do over these last few weeks. Let's continue to pray for one another at this time and stay safe. Let's bow our heads now and pray for God's blessing. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the Church, that persevering in the breaking of bread and in the teaching of the Apostles, we may be one heart and one soul, made steadfast in your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the peace of God, which is so much greater than we can understand, be in our hearts and in the hearts of all those we love, today and always. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.